I'm in the Isle of Man. That's an island in the middle of the Irish Sea between Ireland and Britain, for those of you that aren't familiar with the geography, and at an extraordinary tournament. The Isle of Man Fide Chess.com Grand Swiss Tournament, a grand title for a really amazing tournament. So we have the world champion Magnus Carlsen, the world number two Fabiano Caruana, and a host of other players, 154 players playing in this Swiss event. 11 rounds competing for a first prize of $70,000. But actually, the really interesting uh, prize at the end of the tournament is a qualification spot for the candidates tournament that will be played next spring. Of course, Carlson, he's the world uh, title holder, so it's not interesting to him. Caruana has also qualified. Incredible that they're allowed into this tournament, but it certainly adds spice to it. But there are many other strong players who are eligible for that spot in the candidates who are here. And, well, we had a, quite a few upsets in the first round. Magnus Carlsen should have lost, uh, actually, but he managed to scrape through at the end. Um, I'm going to take you through another game between Yevgeny Naya, who's 42 years old from Russia, former European individual champion. These days, concentrating on his coaching career, he co coaches many strong, really strong players in Russia and the, the Russian women's team, for example. And he had White against Vishwanathan Anand. Now, Vishy is rated number four in the tournament, but this is not an easy first round game for him because Naya has real pedigree. So, the 42-year-old playing against the 49-year-old. Let's see what happened. So, Naya with the white pieces. And it's a very regular start. A Nimzo Indian. There we go. Bishop to b4, pinning that knight. And Naya plays the Rubenstein variation. Now, this is a slightly unusual moment because Naya plays such a modest move here. He plays the bishop to d2, which, well, is the kind of move that, you know, I used to see in club games where my opponents weren't quite sure and they played the bishop to d2. You know, normally white would play the, the king's bishop out to d3. But actually, um, this bishop move, bishop d2, has become quite popular recently. Uh, seems quite modest, but actually there's a bit of venom to it. Now, uh, Vichy played with d5 here, which is, of course, absolutely straightforward. Good move. You can also play with b6 and bring the bishop to the long diagonal. Actually, I rather like that system and just hang back with the pawns in the middle of the board. But d5, absolutely straightforward. Cannot be a bad move. And then b6. So... Typical Vichy, he plays in a very orthodox way. And Naya exchanges pawns in the middle and Vichy recaptures. Now, this is an intriguing moment because, you know, White's system actually looks very modest. But let me show you the kind of thing that White is trying to do. Now, Vichy played the bishop back to e7, which seems, you know, like a bit of a waste of time. But let me just show you what happens if Black plays you know, leaves the bishop on b4 and plays rook e8. I mean, this is really where we want the rook to, potential, to uh, prevent a knight coming into e5 and potentially support uh, later on a knight coming into e4. But in this case, white plays knight b5, and now we can see the point of putting this rook on c1, that there's just suddenly a bit of uncomfortable pressure on this c pawn so after the exchange here you can see that pawn is under fire from the knight and the rook and if that pawn advances then the knight hops in to d6 with an unpleasant fork of rook and bishop um, and that's just in a very awkward position because you can't defend the pawn like that well you can but then the the a pawn goes so 
that's why Vichy thought for about five and a half minutes here and instead of playing a normal developing knight move he actually just played his bishop back to e7 so castles everything fine so far and now knight e5 well Naya is playing in a way that has been seen for well well over a hundred years um, the great American player uh, Pillsbury was very fond of this exactly this setup sometimes with the bishop on g5 uh, this set of the bishop on d2 perhaps on uh, g5 but it's a similar kind of idea that basically once the knight hits the outpost then white is going to support that with f4 so you have this very nice pawn triad supporting the knight on e5 and then you know white starts to attack on the king side so again Vichy had a little bit of a think here thought for over five minutes again and decided to um yeah meet this head on basically he didn't want to allow potentially that pawn to come forward and and then you know if the knights exchange then white can recapture with a pawn I haven't got forgotten my cup of tea <laughs> um, I mean you could play c5 here um, and, and potentially try to, to shut out that bishop with knight e4 but this takes the bull by the horns um, knight e4 is possible but knight, knight d7 is, is absolutely fine and Vichy basically is counter-attacking here and this is a good setup because after this bishop well, you can see it's attacked so it drops back continuing maintaining the bishop on this diagonal that's where it wants to point down towards the king and then d4 so black you know is, is powering through the middle of the board looking for counterplay and of course if that is exchanged off then already this looks tremendous for black um, these pieces so actively placed so let's come back after d4 well Naya thought for a little bit almost five minutes and played the knight to b5 now things are really hotting up so you know if black were to exchange here then that really straightens out white's pieces and, and looks very nice um, and in the meantime white has this nice pawn duo on e5 and f4 so there's potential there but of course this had been anticipated and Vichy played d3 now this whole continuation has really raised the stakes um, this pawn is rather cut off from the rest of black's army well at the moment it's not it's not really cut off because the queen and the knight support it but certainly from the rest of black's pawns so there is a danger that that pawn could be surrounded um incredibly when i you know look look this up when i was doing my research for for this recording i couldn't believe it there are actually two previous games that have reached this position and white played bishop c3 in one of them also very dangerous um, but here after thinking for almost half an hour Naya played knight d4 which suggests to me that he wasn't uh, totally familiar with this line or maybe he knew there'd been uh, previous games but you know wasn't quite sure um, how correct they were or you know what's the best continuation because it is already uh, actually quite a critical position and I'm sure that Vichy didn't um, remember or, or didn't really know this line very well because he was also investing quite a lot of time so knight d4 is very dangerous because cuts off support from the pawn and now you know it's quite possible that white would like to play b4 driving away the knight and then we can potentially just take that pawn on d3 so that's why Vichy played a5 I was wondering about bishop e4 which feels like a nice move to sort of keep that 
uh, pawn protected and, and the bishop looks great in the middle of the board but actually white gets the advantage here this the, again this move b4 and knight c6 is a good move here um, well if white exchanges then that pawn really does look like it's going to be in trouble um, so queen here but actually there's a nice move for white and that's rook c4 uh, which will drive the bishop away and then rook c3 and, and that pawn is going to drop in the middle and yeah this attack looks very strong so let's go back so remember white has just played knight d4 so that's why Vichy played pawn to a5 preventing white from playing b4 so securing the, the knight on this square and now Naya went for the attack queen g4 well this feels very very natural now that that knight has been driven away from f6 then the king side is lacking a bit of defense uh, so you know with these pawns here giving cover the queen comes out the knight is ready uh, these bishops have potential uh, they're in the wings as well so not not an easy position and as I said there is a precedent previously there was a game between Salam Gareev and Alexeyev played this year where black played king h8 um, well it's all very sharp um, I it's very hard to say what the best move is but what we can say is in this position black played g6 anyway and then after bishop c3 there were problems for the king the game ended in the draw but yeah it somehow feels a bit funny for black to put the king on h8 straight away any in any case Vichy thought for 12 minutes here and played whoops not this in this position Vichy thought for about 12 minutes and played g6 but then f5 Naya pushing on very nicely uh, with this really powerful pawn duo, duo. And already I was beginning to feel a little bit anxious for Vichy because white has really two ways that he can try to attack one is the very direct f6 uh, in this position it even traps the bishop on e7 but after f6 then that queen you know obviously can can try and crawl in 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 the most crude way to to g7 to to force mate and the other way is to play e6 to undermine the support for the pawn on g6 so for example if rook e8 which allows the bishop to drop back here then well this is kind of a gift for white because now f7 is so weak um so Vichy played here well really a, a critical move knight e4 attacking the bishop on d2 um my computer suggests uh, h5 um which is not a very human move because it it weakens black's king side uh, it kind of does the hard work for for white um and and you know this is one potential line I mean I have a feeling that white is doing well here it's extremely complicated I mean after f6 then the bishop cuts black's position in two cuts the rooks and now this move rook f5 is so dangerous you know with with simple ideas of, of uh, taking on h5 or, or sometimes even just rook g5 and you know setting up threats here and, and also to to defend the pawn there but i mean obviously rook h5 is is the big threat um so yeah h5 i'm not surprised that vichy uh rejected that one instead he played after about 20 minutes the more natural knight e4 both players investing quite a lot of time but actually it was nair who was started to run quite short of time in this game he could just play quite conservatively with with rook d1 here and and protect the bishop and, and look to 
capture the pawn on d3, but he really went for it here. <laughs> Bishop d3. I mean, this shows he has a, a real instinct for attack. Uh, and, you know, he, he won the European Individual Championship a few years ago, uh, but that's not his only first place. He won the Aeroflot Open in 2016. He won the Poikowski Tournament in 2017. So, you know, he is a very strong and dangerous player. So let's see what happened. Knight takes bishop. Pawn takes pawn on g6. So he's broken through. And now, well, black has a few options here. Let's, first of all, let's check out the greedy route. Knight takes rook. Well, there is a beautiful move here. Knight e6. That threatens pawn takes pawn check, followed by queen g7 mate. So that really has to be taken. And then queen h5. And this actually forces mate. I mean, there's no other defense than this. And now it's actually pretty easy. You can do it all with checks. Queen h5 is a good move. Pre prevents black's king running away via e8. And, well, you can see that with these three pieces mate follows shortly uh, so what else we got um, h takes g6 loses straight away to bishop takes and then we're in like this first of all a check here and then knight e6 threatening the queen and queen g7 mate uh, so that's why pawn takes pawn was played and once again, bishop takes, which if black takes this bishop, then that's mate exactly in exactly the same way as the other line. But here black has a potential defense. Um, let, let me just see. After rook takes rook, in fact, this is winning after this. And 96 again, that's, that's this very strong move. Black's a lot of material ahead, but that's just winning. Um, but after this move, bishop takes g6. Naya played king h8. And, well, you, you know, we were looking at this game in our live commentary, and once I found king h8, I wasn't exactly sure how white was going to proceed. But Naya hacked on with bishop takes pawn. I mean, it, this takes real bravery to play in this way. You know, he's material down, and this is certainly not conclusive. Well, it is if that bishop is taken. Let's just see that very quickly. Once again, it's this knight coming in, which just tips things over. Um, black's pieces can't defend on the king side. And after this, well, that's a pretty standard checkmating idea so after this move bishop takes pawn we had rook takes rook rook takes and now bishop g5 so the idea is let's let's play in the most direct way if queen h5 we can take check and then the queen comes to g5 to defend so that's vicious idea so after bishop g5 knight f5 an excellent move protecting the pawn on e3. Queen d3. Um, here Naya played rook e1, uh, which is a very strong move, actually. Um, my computer tells me that rook c1 uh, is, is winning, uh, but that somehow looks a bit obscure. I mean, rook e1 feels very natural, again, just to give that pawn protection and obviously to prevent queen takes rook mate. Um, and after this one, well, this is fascinating because uh, after bishop takes pawn, in fact, um, it's not very good if this bishop is taken. Obviously, rook takes allows mate in one. And if knight takes, then queen takes bishop. And black has uh, pretty good chances to defend that one. So king h1 played, and the bishop came back. So mate threatened here, bishop came back to, to h6. And now here, well, Naya played 
queen g6 and that is a mistake he should have played bishop g6 and this is very strong um, I mean one thing is this bishop is now on prees um, if knight e4 which feels like a, a nice move in fact queen h4 it's quite a simple move covers this one but also threatens queen takes bishop and mate so bishop g6 was the move as, as I mentioned before uh, Naya was running really quite short of time at this moment and it's interesting you know that clock was ticking down but he was he's obviously convinced he had something because he just remained totally focused at the board um, and kept calculating you know he wasn't guessing here he really invested his time which takes such a lot of nerve but he played queen g6 and it's inaccurate Vichy took on g2 good move and now if queen takes then this isn't so clear so king takes but now with the exposed king then black has counter chances but here incredibly i mean vichy had time here he had from memory i think it was like 20 minutes or, or maybe 15 minutes but certainly you know he had a chunk of time he could have used to, to find a defense or, or you know something um he played queen d5 that was a mistake he could have played queen f3 and the, i mean this is not a simple idea but queen f4 and this holds actually so after this take this one and yeah we can take this and this should end in a draw i mean there are all kinds of interesting tactics here in this position for example well this move which looks obvious this would be a mistake because after bishop e4 um so you make sure the bishop isn't attacked but the bishop here um and and the king dominate the knight and then that can be taken next move and that would win but as i said in this position king takes is actually uh, holding the position for black but let's come back to the game king takes g2 just being played and fishy played queen d5 mistake the king staggered up the board uh queen f3 doesn't make a difference queen d3 played and after king h4 Vichy resigned so why exactly did he resign well let's have a look um, the Queen doesn't really have any sensible checks I mean it can play here but then the King goes up the board if Knight f3 again King h5 now the threat here well let's just see the threat Knight takes Rook we can check on f6 and Queen g7 mate and really there is simply no defense at this point um, let's try something else well for example rook f8 to cover that f6 square but then well we can we can take on h6 and that truly is the end of the game because after that check well we counter with another check and that is game over so that was a bit of a shocker vichy missed out he lost in round one and well I'm afraid his calculation let him down. I mean, maybe he just thought he was lost, but yeah, that is a big disappointment for him. So it's 11 rounds this tournament. Um, I'm going to try and make it a recording each day, but do join me anyway for live coverage of the tournament on the official site. Thanks for watching.